Hi guys. G M N G N. I like to do a real quick survey here. So, how many of you guys have uh, have mint your DID successfully? Just type one, and type two if you haven't. Great, 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 great. Okay, haven't. Okay. Cool. Uh. Sure. So I will do it one more time for 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 every one of you here later, um, at eight uh, p.m. So that uh, yeah, you can you can see how to do that. And some of you use Rambo. Some of you use MetaMask uh, mobile app. So the easiest way and uh, the most uh, the way we are, we are quite sure is that you can use uh, the MetaMask Chrome. Uh, to do the 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 DID meeting, that will encounter definitely no uh, problems. If you use Rambo or MetaMask small, uh, mobile app, it might be okay, but sometimes it just uh, yeah, it sucks. By the way, another quick story. How many of you guys will go to the Hong Kong FinTech Week? Uh, that is Rumble. You can also use Rumble, but uh, I'm not sure whether it works. FinTech Week? FinTech Week will not be free. I think it's... Uh, is one 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 is that ten hundred uh, HKD as a as a ticket price? But we're, we're we're trying to we're thinking of holding a side event here near FinTech Week, and uh, that will be a free event for ev for everyone here. So yeah, just uh, stay in tune. We'll definitely have that uh, prepared. We'll invite uh, some ventures uh some uh some projects and also some professors to come so that you can get network with uh build campers and also the industry guys we will send uh, you the invitation link later okay let's just uh, get started for today's course so hi everyone this is max again i i'm here to keep you guys company for every day and uh today we have uh our our new guest speaker, uh, Oliver. Uh, please say hi to everyone. Hi guys, nice to see you here. Yeah, uh, nice to meet everyone here. And uh, uh, so before the session starts, I would like to give some uh, quick review of uh, what we are actually doing this week and also some more information for you guys. You guys are raising a lot of uh, questions in the, uh, in, in, in the WeChat Discord Telegram group about uh, uh, mentorship programs, career hubs, and also DID stuff. So I will do it one by one, so you can you, you guys can see that again. I will just share my desktop here, so everyone everyone can see that, right? So firstly, uh, please uh, always be reminded that uh, you need to form a group of ten to fifteen team members, uh, and uh, fill your name and wallet address here. And we're going to uh, assign you mentors accordingly. And uh, it, it is actually a really, really good opportunity for you 
um, you can see here, this is our mentor uh, matrix. Um, so everyone in Hong Kong, and and if you just uh, if you went through Twitter, you should know Raycon, uh, Xiao Huan Xiong from uh, Bu Jidao. Uh, he's a founder of that. He's also a USD alumni. We also have uh, Mr. Block, the biggest KOL in Taiwan, who also be your mentor. I'm not sure which uh, group will be lucky enough to be uh, assigned uh, to, to 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 him, but uh, definitely he will be one. We also have uh, really really a lot of uh, venture capital partners. Uh, industry partners, you can, and media partners, you can name it, like uh, Sam Digital, Chiron, GBV, Jensen Bro Capital, uh, Avalanche, Avalanche uh, Official, and also MVXE. Johnson will be your mentor. Johnson is really, really handsome. <laughs> so yeah, don't miss a chance. Please uh, fill in the form to form, uh, form your team. I think uh, today or tomorrow will be the deadline. Oh, actually today. Uh, so if you haven't joined the team, please uh, do as soon as possible. We have uh, we have uh, around 28 to 29 teams right now, so not a lot of uh, is available. Um, but also I would like to mention is that a lot of uh, students, uh, campers are asking, uh, what if I cannot form a, a team of 10 to 15? So you are required to form a 15 to 10, form a team of 10 to 15 because we have too many campers. So uh, that will be a, a appropriate amount of uh, members in one group. But since uh, it is not signed up, uh, there are still some uh, empty spaces. So we will assign accordingly. Like uh, if you have uh, eight, nine, or even seven, six members in your group, it is uh, also fine, perhaps. But uh, if we have uh, all teams signed up, then you will be the least uh, priority to be considered to sign a member because you have uh, two less, uh, two little members in, in your group. So it is what it is. And uh, many students asking, what is uh, the, 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 the aim of the mentorship program? Uh, what is the relationship with mentorship program and the, the after uh, build camp hackathon? So here's the thing, um, you are not required to uh, form the same group for the hackathon. Uh, this uh, group is only for the mentorship program. You will be assigned the, the same mentor, but uh, it is really a good chance to get a uh, network and uh, meet some friends and a team and uh, try to lay a foundation of the future hackathon. But again, you're not uh, necessarily to form the same group. Yeah, this is about the hackathon stuff and uh, mentorship uh, program stuff. So if you want to join the mentorship program, so please be reminded that uh, you need to sign uh, add the add into the team by tonight. And uh, another thing is about DID minting. I'm uh, sure that some of you guys still have not minted your DID. We have around uh, 300 to 400 students successfully minted DID, but some of you guys haven't. So I will do it again, like how are you going to do that? So let me disconnect it first. And uh, I would choose another wallet, uh, maybe like uh, anyone, okay, connect. And now I will go into connect wallet. First you click connect wallet. And uh, I use MetaMask. MetaMask will be easiest to send you use. You sign here. And now you type your name, uh, choose your tracks, skills, uh, descriptions, and then you click Mint. And you can see here, it is pending. Just uh, uh, refresh and later it's going to show your token ID. Once you see there is a token ID here, then that means you are successfully minted. And uh, you can go to either scan to type in your your, your, your wallet address and go to your C721 token. You can see the transaction here. Okay, yeah, now it's done. My token is 219 and uh, this is my, 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 my DID. And after you have the DID, you can go to build camp. Click join camp first. Always reminded to click join camp first. Otherwise you will not be able to claim any NFTs or courses. Click join camp and claim the password NFT. This password NFT will be also on chain. So just claim and you need to enter the password uh, and uh, do the same thing for lesson one, two, and three. 
for this one, there will be no password because we haven't launched the password system at that time. And again, lesson one, two, three course NFTs will not be on chain. It will be a database certificate for you. But later on, after you gathered all the uh, database NFTs uh, for different lessons, finally, we're going to grant you a on-chain NFT to verify your participation on the build camp. Am I clear? Yeah, this is all about build camp. And uh, another thing I would like to show you is we have uh, opened a career hub for every one of you here. So please go to Discord. You can see here, uh, please go to Discord. And uh, firstly, you, you, join, you join the Discord and need, you need to verify yourself, yourself first. So click verify first here. And then you can see other channels. Then go to Collaboland, click, uh, click let's go. And you can see it here, just connect wallet. Connect wallet, it might take some time. Yeah, here it is. Now you can verify yourself. Uh, yeah, but uh, the sin is uh, I have verified myself because uh, uh, I have verified myself as a, as a DID holder, so I cannot verify it again. But for any one of you, you can do that. After you verify yourself, you can go to the career. You can see the career section here. If you haven't verified yourself, you will not be able to see the see the career section here. And in the career section, we're going to we have a lot of uh, uh, industry participators and collaborators, partners. For example, Hashkey is the first one to get into the career hub. So, like Baby Jean, Candice, they are colleagues from Hashkey in charge of HR departments, and uh, they're here and they were going to post some uh, job opportunities. If you're interested, you can go to the Korea chat to introduce yourself, or you can just uh, DM Hashkey group or, or those HRs. So, but uh, the first thing is need to, you need to verify yourself as, as a DID holder. If you're not a DID holder, you will not be able to enter the Korea hub. So uh, do remember to mint your DID and verify yourself in the Discord channel so that you'll be able to join the Korea hub. Right, so this is basically all I need to update right now. So any questions here, you can raise your hand if you want to raise a, 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 a live question or you can do it uh, by typing. Uh, you do not need to use the same email you register for, for Discord. You can use any email because uh, we were going to verify your address with a DID, not like your email. Team members must, uh, <laughs> less than 15. I, I, we recommend that because we do have that amount of uh, mentors. If you have 20 members in your group, that means uh, for each of you who will have uh, less opportunities to talk to the mentors, but it's really dependent on you guys. If you really want to form a team of 16 or 17, 18, uh, we're okay with that. Do I have to mean the DID to participate in Hackathon? You do not need to. Hackathon is another separate event. Yeah, yeah. So if no, any other question, we'll go to today's main topic. So yeah, let's welcome uh, Oliver to deliver today's speech. That should be Ethereum and Ethereum killers. Um, yeah, welcome. Okay, thanks, Max. Uh, let me share my screen first. Uh, okay, can you see the PowerPoint? Uh, let's start. Uh, hi, campus. Uh, this is Oliver from Blockchain Academy. I'm really honored to be able to share with you here. And today we will discuss about the public chains, especially Ethereum, BNB chain, and Aptos. I uh, hope you all have good time in the following one and a half hours. Uh, firstly, you will have one million to scan the QR code to take the attendance of today's lesson three. 
uh, you can scan the QR code and get the attendance NFT. Um, but do not worry, you will have a second chance at the end of today's class um, to scan the QR code again. Okay, please uh, quickly do it. You will have another 30 seconds. Okay, let's start today's uh, today's lecture. Um, before the let's talk first talk about the uh, public chains. Before the birth of Ethereum in two thousand and seventeen, blockchains like Bitcoin only had limited functions like value storage. Um, but Ethereum creatively brought smart contracts to the blockchain and greatly enriched the ecosystem on chain. Then the success of Ethereum also brought the emergence of various other public chains. Uh, through the study of the first lesson, I believe uh, you all have a basic understanding of Ethereum. Uh, in this lesson, we will take you to the public chain uh, and understand the development of different public chains and their ecosystem. Uh, let's first compare the main conditions of each public chain. We have uh, interpreted the uh, top 10 blockchain projects currently ranked by TVL, total value log. As you can see, the current leader of the public chain uh, and track is still Ethereum with 168 billion TVL far ahead. And behind Ethereum is um, BNB chain, also known as BSC, Tron, Solana, Avalanche, and others. Initially, almost all liquidity was on Ethereum. And uh, then with the competition of DeFi Summer and public chain, the liquidity of all chains uh, was increasingly environmentally, while the liquidity ratio of the Ethereum had been declining and then stable at around uh, 16%. You can see at, the, uh, at this graph. Uh, other public chain obtained liquidity through large scale uh, subsidies to developers and uh, users, like using foundation to invest in ecosystem projects, just like Digis was invested by uh, Avalanche Blizzard Fund. This is an uh, ecosystem foundation of Avalanche. And also they try to raise their APRs on their chains, just like Luna, they raise their stable coin yield to over 10% each year to raise their APRs to gain more TVL. Uh, but it seems that currently they are all, they are all almost uh, exhausted now. And uh, these public chains all claim to be Ethereum killers and aim to default Ethereum, but so far, uh, you can see that Ethereum's leading position is still unshakable. In this lesson, we will mainly talk about Ethereum and its layer two, such as Arbitrum and uh, Optimism. Uh, they are also the top 10 chains by TVL, and as well as BSC chain and Aptos. Uh, we will also um, prepare side courses and other materials for other blockchains. Uh, so feel free to view our materials if you are interested in them. In addition to TVL, uh, the number of on-chain protocols is also a very important dimension to measure a uh, public chain. Uh, from this aspect, Ethereum and the BNB smart chain are also the two most active chains for developers. Uh, and the ecosystem of Avalanche, Solana are, are also developing rapidly. Uh, although Ethereum still has uh, the largest number of projects, it does not have uh, such huge advantage like TBL. Uh, I think the main reason is that for public chain uh, compatible with EVM, Ethereum virtual machine, the cost for of forking a project from Ethereum to another chain is very low. You only need to find the open source open source code from GitHub and deploy the contract on the old, on the new chain. Then you can get a new project uh, because you can see many projects on on BSC or on Avalanche is very similar to the project on Ethereum and because uh, some of them are just forked from Ethereum. Um, before working into Ethereum again, let me introduce you the uh, treatment of blockchain. Speaking of the treatment, the first thing that comes to mind is the impossible triangle of traditional uh, monetary theory. Uh, that is, a country cannot achieve the independence of a monetary policy and uh, the st uh, stability of exchange rates 
and the free flow of capital at the same time. I think this is a famous uh, theory in the in economics. Uh, you can see Hong Kong choose option two, uh, Hong Kong choose free capital flows and fixed, uh, fixed exchange rate, but it gave up the, in the, the independent uh, monetary policy. Uh, in the blockchain world, decentralized security and high performance uh, constitutes the uh, trademark of the uh, blockchain. In the design of today's blockchain, the three characteristics cannot be achieved at the same time, but only in accordance with the, with um, two of the three. Decentralized means that uh, having a large number of nodes participate in the blockchain um, production and, ver and verification. Generally speaking, the more nodes there are, the higher the degree of decentralized is. Uh, security uh, means the cost of gain control of the network. Usually, uh, anchoring real world assets in the design of consensus mechanism, uh, such as uh, Bitcoin use uh, POW, proof of work, uh, anchoring computing power. Um, blockchain performance generally refers to the number of uh, TPS, which means transactions per second, um, persist by the network. Uh, next, let's take a look at how blockchain uh, trauma is embodied in Israel. During the Israel 1.0 period, uh, which means several years ago, the entire Israel network had around 10,000 nodes, uh, far exceeding the number of other uh, chains such as BSC or Solana. Therefore, Ethereum is known as the most decentralized blockchain. Uh, in terms of uh, network security, like the Bitcoin network, Ethereum adopts the um, PW of um, proof of work method, uh, which requires miners to use graphic cards for to mine the and uh, to for mine to for, for mine to maintain the, the security of the network which requires a lot of computing power. Therefore, the cost, of, the cost for hackers to attack Ethereum is very high. Uh, you can see in the uh, right graph, uh, if a hacker wants to attack Ethereum, it need to get uh, over 15 of the uh, computing power. Uh, in terms of network security, Ethereum is also the top of the uh, public chain track. Uh, of course, we mentioned uh, blockchain trauma earlier, and Ethereum guarantees the decentralized and security of the network, which means it must sacrifice its performance to some extent. Uh, for each transaction, uh, for each transaction, all consensus on the internal networks need to be reached. Since there are large of num large number of nodes, uh, the process takes a lot of time. Uh, since, uh, and it's like limited the uh, speeds of the transaction. Uh, in the period of, of Ethereum 1.0, Ethereum can only process about uh, 14 transactions per second. Although it uh, is a big improvement compared to Bitcoin's seven TPS, um, but it's also, but it's still much more slower than BSC who has around 116 TPS, while Solana even reached around and tens of thousands. Uh, if you want to know uh, how Sonana makes it, you can also prepare, we, we have also prepared a side course uh, on this topic. You are welcome to attend the side courses. The mechanism of um, POW ensures the security of blockchain network to a large extent, but at the same time, uh, since nodes perform violent operations in order to um, compete for the right to produce blocks and obtain benefits uh, in order to maintain the normal operation of the entire Israel network. It needs to consume a large amount of computing power and, and energy. Uh, Israel's total energy consumption uh, peaked during the crypto bull run in February of this year. The consumption speed uh, at that time is around 94 uh, terawatt hour. Uh, which is larger than two times of the electronic consumption speed in, in Hong Kong. Uh, because of the huge uh, energy consumption, many governments, uh, especially Chinese government, have banned the Bitcoin and Ethereum mining. 
Um, this problem is obvious. So Ethereum Foundation and the Ethereum developers, they are also know it very well. So in order to solve the problem of high uh, energy consumption and low uh, efficiency, Ethereum developers, they decide to start over and propose a concept of Ethereum 2.0. Uh, it includes five upgrade parts and they are all in the process. So what is Ethereum 2.0? Compare with the uh, previous Ethereum 1.0, uh, in addition to the energy consumption problem, uh, how can Ethereum 2.0 improve 1.0? In order to solve this problem, we, can, we have to start with the development process of Ethereum. In the development plan of Ethereum and the beginning of its birth, Ethereum have four, has four milestone stages. And the four stages are Frontier, uh, Homestead, Metropolis, and uh, Serenity. Uh, Frontier is an experimental stage uh, in the very early stage of Ethereum. It re released in July 2015. At that time, the software was not yet mature, but um, basically mining, learning, and uh, experimentation could be performed. Uh, after the system runs, uh, it had attract many people's attention and participate in the development. Uh, as an application platform, Ethereum leads more people to develop their own DAP, decentralized APP, uh, and to, rely, to realize the value of Ethereum itself. Uh, as popularity grew, so did the value of Ethereum. And then it come to the second stage, which named uh, uh, Homestay. Uh, it was the first official product release of Ethereum. Released in March 2016, it is 100% uh, um, proof of work mining. Uh, but in addition to the increase of uh, computing power, there is another factor that increasing mining difficulty exponentially, uh, which is named the typical bomb. Uh, this Condrom was first mentioned in August 2015, when former Ethereum chief commercial officer Stephen Tong, Stephen Tong launched Frontier's first launch in, the, in, the, in his blog post. The, for, the difficulty bomb refers to the uh, calculation of the difficulty, in addition to the adjustment based on the block time and the difficulty of the previous block, uh, plus a difficulty factor that increase, uh, increases is potentially every 100,000 blocks. Uh, then it came to the third stage named uh, Metropolis. Uh, it has uh, and it has two sub-stages, which means uh, which named Byzantium and uh, Constantinople, uh, which will be upgraded through two hard forks. Uh, we have a special article to introduce uh, the hard forks. Uh, you can also check it if you are interested. And the Byzantine plan was active by as a block height of uh, 4,317,000 in October 2017. As, uh, and the fork was successfully, successfully completed. It mainly adjusted the uh, block difficulty and the mining rewards. While the, constant, uh, while the Constantinople hard fork was delayed several, uh, several times. Trigger in February 2019. In this fork, Ethereum has upgraded the uh, gas fee, uh, mining rewards, and the smart contract, uh, smart contract verification. The last stage, uh, which named uh, uh, Serenity, on the other hand, in the five uh, development stage of Ethereum, which means uh, a period of complete functions and uh, stability. And Ethereum before moved towards quiet. It also known as uh, Ethereum 2.0. Uh, the Ethereum mainnet was officially marched on uh, 5th September, which is just uh, one month ago. So far, the entire network is functioning is functionally normally, uh, which are represents the uh, official start of the Ethereum 2.0 era. We can see the biggest change from Ethereum 1.0 to 2.0 is a change from the um, POW proof of work mechanism to POS proof of stake. Uh, everyone must have understand of um, POW in the first lesson. So what is POS? 
in 2011 in a Bitcoin forum, a user proposed a technique he called it proof of stake. Uh, the basic concept is that in the POW mechanism, it is wasteful to have uh, each miner compete with each other to mine by consumption of, uh, by consuming a lot of uh, computing power. Uh, so instead, proof of stake takes a uh, takes a form of electric, uh, elections where any nodes is randomly choosing from a uh, random chosen to validate the next block. There are some uh, minor uh, term and uh, technology difference here. There are no miners in proof of stake, but only validators. Instead of letting people mine new block, they mint or fork new blocks. Validators are not completely randomly select are not completely randomly selected to become a validator. A node needs to deposit a certain amount of currency in the network as equity, which can be understood as a security deposit. And the stake size determines the chance of being selected as a validator to create the next block, which is linearly related. Uh, suppose that Bob deposits one hundred dollars in the uh, one hundred dollars in the network, and Alice deposit one thousand dollars. Then Alice has ten times higher chance uh, of being elected as a validator than Bob. It seems unfair because uh, it favors the rich, but it's actually more fair than uh, proof of work. For for proof of work, the rich can largely enjoy the fruits of uh, economic power. Uh, the cost they pay for mining equipment and electricity has not skyrocketed. Instead, the more they buy, the more they get. But uh, let's go back to proof of stake. If a node is elected to validate the next block, uh, he will check their uh, the, he will check uh, the all the transactions in uh, in it are valid. If all goes well. The node passes the block and the block is added to the blockchain. As a reward, the node will get the transaction fee in this block. So how can we um, trust uh, other validators in the network? Uh, equity is needed here. If a validator um, passes a fake transaction, they will lose uh, a proportion of their stake tokens. As long as the uh, stake is higher than the transaction fee, of the, uh, the validator they receive, uh, we can trust them uh, to do their job well. Otherwise, they lose, mo they lose more money than they can gain. Uh, so this is a, a monetary dynamic. And as long as the stake is higher than all transaction fees, uh, this is feasible. Um, Okay, so let's take a look. So, what's the difference between um, proof of work and uh, uh, the difference between proof of work and proof of stake is obvious. The advantage of proof of stake is that proof of stake does not let everyone to mine your block. So, it's, uh, it consists, uh, so it consumes less energy. And the switching to proof of stake Ethereum two point uh, Ethereum two point zero consensus uh, significantly less energy from the network than. Um, proof, um, proof of work. Uh, uh, it's only cost about 0 0.01 terawatt every year. Uh, so which means it's uh, thousands less than the previous proof of work. Recall that uh, Ethereum in the proof of work needs to consume 94 uh, terawatt hour per year. So at the same time, the network will be more and more decentralized. Or we see that in the proof of work, in order to aggregate computing power, more rewards are option. Uh, some people join forces to set up mining pools uh, to improve their chances of mining new errors to get rewards. Uh, this has also resulted in a massive uh, concentration of the computing power, which, which in Ethereum 1.0 is uh, dominated by these uh, mining pools. Then let's talk about uh, the merge. Although the concept of POS was proposed as early as 2011, why did the Ethereum of POS not actually go online until 
uh, September 2022. Uh, in fact, as early as when Vitalik proposed Ethereum, he planned to use POS mechanism in Ethereum. But because the uh, um, POS mechanism is uh, immature at that time, and the POW mechanism has been confirmed in Bitcoin network. Uh, this is one of the reasons. Another reason I think is more important is that uh, the combination of users. Uh, you must know that uh, over 15% uh, of our blockchain user at that time uh, were engaged in the mining industry. So uh, after my thinking, Vitalik decided to build Ethereum in the way of uh, proof of work to gain more users. And through a series of updates, it will finally con convert it to um, POS later. This can also explain why the mining difficulty has, has been continuously increased in the first three, uh, three stages of updates. Uh, according to this mechanism, in the uh, later stage of proof of work, the mining difficulty will increase to, to the point where new blocks cannot be generated and the Ethereum network will be frozen to form an ice age. The, pur the purpose is to finally uh, animate the proof of work mechanism and complete the smooth transaction to Ethereum mechanism from proof of work to proof of state. It should be noted that many articles uh, now mistake proof of stake and proof of work as a consensus mechanism. Uh, actually, this is not true. Proof Proof of stake and proof of work is a basis on which blockchain uh, use certain consensus mechanism to achieve distributed consensus. Okay, let's, let's go let's continue. Then how did the merge happen? First of all, the Ethereum 2.0 needs a place where validators can stake their uh, ETH before the official uh, officially merge, uh, which is launched on December um, 2020. It is called the uh, um, Bacon, uh, Bacon Chain. After two years of Bacon Chain update and, and the March preparation, the March finally happened in the in September of this year. Uh, after the mainnet and the Bacon Chain March, Ethereum officially entered in the um, proof of stake uh, phase. Now we can have a uh, overall look uh, overall look as uh, of the status of the Ethereum proof of stake. There are over uh, 400,000 validators and uh, 40 million Ethereum are staked in the uh, in Ethereum uh, proof of stake. Uh, nearly 14% of the stake Ethereum are shared by Lido Finance, Coinbase, and, uh, and Kraken. Um, although proof of uh, stake has increased uh, uh, a lot of uh, disadvantage of proof of work, uh, however, um, proof uh, is only the first stage of Ethereum 2.0, which can only reduce uh, energy consumption, uh, and uh, but it cannot improve the speed on to process the transaction. In other words, Ethereum is still uh, can only still uh, process. 14 transactions per second. And then it means that Ethereum needs a follow up operations to expand its um, capacity. Uh, among all the expansion schemes, the layer two, which is also called Ethereum roll up scheme, uh, is the uh, most popular among uh, crypto users. So, what is layer two? Uh, we can, you can imagine that such a situation in a mass, ex in a mass exam. You encounter a very complicated uh, multi choice questions. In order to save, solve this mass question, you need to perform many steps of calculation to get the final result. Uh, if you do not, if you do the calculation directly on the test paper, it will definitely cause the entire test paper to be very confusing, which will also affect the speed of your problem solving. Uh, so, what if you had a scratch paper? then the situation will be uh, completely different. You can do all the calculations on the scratch paper and just fill in the answers um, to the paper. Uh, this is also the principle of Ethereum roll up. All the calculations and the steps 
required to complete a transaction are carried out on a layer two. And only the results are sent back to Ethereum for recording. According to the uh, different roll-up schemes, the major two are optimistic roll-up and ZK roll-up. Uh, also, you can uh, uh, find other materials about uh, state channel and uh, plasma on our platform later. Uh, you can see, uh, although they are earlier, but now the most popular two uh, roll-up is optimistic and ZK. Uh, okay, let's introduce the uh, optimistic roll up to you first. And uh, like the uh, literary meaning, the optimistic uh, explanation method is based on the optimistic mechanism using freight proof. Um, that is, the system uh, op uh, optimistically believes in the correctness of the transaction data. The data has not been uh, effectively verified, but will directly uh, enter a waiting period. During the waiting period, uh, if any if any node raise an objection and approves a fake transaction, the transaction will be canceled. If there is no objection, the waiting period will end it and the transaction will be automatically complicated, uh, automatically completed and write into the block. Uh, this fr this freight proof exam does not need to uh, deploy, deploy verification in each transaction, uh, which will which greatly saves the network computing resources and costs, while also ensuring the uh, the right result in the in the end. The two most uh, uh, famous game of uh, famous game of optimistic roll up are Arbitrum and uh, Optimism. Uh, currently, Arbitrum ranks the first and Optimism ranks second. In fact, Optimism was the first company to invent the uh, EVM compatible optimistic rollup protocol. But Arbitrum gained a late mover advantage due to its mainland launch today. Uh, the two schemes are similar in structure. And the key difference is their anti-freight logic and the way they deal with um, capability issues in the future. Uh, we will introduce uh, uh, the difference uh, between them in the side course. Okay, then we move to the uh, zero knowledge ZK rollup. Uh, we can first talk about what is ZK. Uh, ZK is short for zero knowledge. Uh, this is a method of proof by uh, this is method of proof by which one party uh, is also called the prover uh, can prove to another party is also called a, a verifier. And that is the truth of the secretary, of the secretary uh, or a statement without uh, revealing any actual information uh, which outside is true. The concept was introduced by researchers at MIT in 1918. And the uh, uh, zero knowledge proof has long been considered uh, very complicated and is also called a uh, Moon mass, which means you can only do this mass on uh, in the moon. It's very difficult. Uh, so, what is zero knowledge proof? Uh, let's introduce it by a by a small story. Uh, just in, like in the graph shows, uh, Peggy has uh, uh, uncovered the secret wall used to open a magic door in a in a cave. The cave is shaped like a ring, with the uh, entrance on one side and the magic door blocking the operator side. A vector wants to know whether Peggy knows the secret one. But Peggy, being a very private person, does not want to reveal the knowledge uh, or the secret word to vector. Uh, and also do not want to reveal the fact that uh, he, sh he, she knows the word to, to the world in general. And they enable the left and the right path from the interest A and B. First, Vector waits outside the, uh, the cave as Peggy goes in. Uh, then Peggy takes either, uh, takes either pass A or B. Vector is not allowed to say which pass she takes. And then Vector enters the cave and uh, uh, shows the name of um, the pass he wants, uh, wants her to use to return, either A or B, chosen and random. 
um, providing her really does know the uh, magic word and that's easy. She opens the door if necessary and return along the, the desired paths. However, suppose that she did not know the word, then she would only be able to return by the name pass if vector uh, uh, were to give the name of the same pass by which she had entered. And since vector choose uh, A and B at random, she would have a 15% chance of guessing correctly. Uh, if they were, uh, were to repeat this trick many times, uh, just say 20 times in a row, uh, her chance to successfully uh, anticipating all the vectors requests would become very small. And thus, if Peggy uh, repeatedly appears as uh, exact vector uh, names, he can, we can conclude that uh, that is uh, extremely probability and uh, that um, Peggy does, or in fact knows a secret word. Uh, that's a very simple version of ZK proof. That means we can um, prove that Peggy knows a secret word without uh, actually knowing the, uh, the secret words, uh, what, is, what is it? This uh, uh, definition and a story about uh, ZK uh, zero knowledge proof. So what is uh, ZK roll up? Uh, ZK roll up is a, a scaling solution that passes to zero knowledge validate proof. Uh, ZK roll up um, batches off chain transactions and uh, generates uh, cryptographic validate um, proofs to verify the authority of each bunch. Unlike optimistic roll up, uh, which optimistically believes that all submitted state routes. Are, are trustworthy and guarantee security by uh, submitting fit proofs. Uh, ZK Rollup uses uh, cryptographic proofs to publish the state rules and uh, zero knowledge proof to verify the, uh, uh, the authenticity of state rules, uh, thereby avoiding access to the uh, data itself to guarantee privacy. Compare with optimistic rollup, uh, it takes a uh, week to withdraw. Uh, ZK rollup only with, you can withdraw uh, assets on ZK rollup uh, in just 10 minutes. It's much more uh, faster and you do not wait that long. However, as a uh, new technology, uh, ZK's mathematically, mathematic principle is extremely complicated, uh, which leads to the fact that ZK rollup is still in the development stage and therefore, uh, is adaptability uh, is weaker than uh, that of optimistic rollup. Uh, however, the advantages of ZK rollup are very obvious. ZK removes the weakness of the transaction and uh, which greatly reduces the data stored on the chain. Uh, also, it uh, increases uh, scalability uh, and also verify each transaction, making it more uh, secure. After I uh, introduce uh, two methods of the roll-up, so let's discuss which one is better. Um, for, for the aspect of uh, DeFi readiness, uh, OP roll-up, optimistic roll-up seem to be a better choice as a way to execution uh, is, because it's a way to execution is similar to EVM, while ZK roll-up lack uh, of that support. Uh, although some ZK rollup also supports uh, a smart contract, but it does not support uh, either virtual machine. So if you want to deploy uh, your um, protocol on Ethereum to the ZK rollup chain, you need to rewrite all your smart contract codes in a new language. Uh, you cannot use Solidity directly. So it uh, costs a lot of extra energy to, for the developers to move their protocols to uh, ZK Rob. On the other hand, uh, let's take a look at the transaction uh, finality. The ZK Rob, the uh, OP Rob, uh, needs one week to finalize the transaction for the challenge, but ZK Rob only needs uh, several, uh, several minutes. Uh, Vitalik said in 2021 uh, in general, my own view is as a short term, uh, in a short term. Uh, optimistic roll up are likely to win out the 
uh, win out for general purpose EVM uh, computation. And uh, ZK rollups are likely to win out for the uh, simple payments uh, exchanges and other application specific user case. But in the medium to long term, uh, ZK rollup will win out in all, uh, all use cases as uh, ZK snake and technology improves. So you can see that um, Vitalik, uh, he personally very uh, looks good on the uh, ZK rollup. But just as I say, ZK rollup is very, very difficult uh, on the mathematics uh, problems. So uh, we cannot uh, say that ZK rollup will, uh, will solve all the problems in the near years. It may take uh, several years or even tens of years. Okay, after talking about Ethereum and uh, layer two, let's talk about another, another famous public chain, um, BNB chain. Um, BNB smart chain is also known as BSC. Uh, it is uh, uh, the biggest uh, competitor with Ethereum. Uh, after, uh, in April 2019, uh, Binance launched its own blockchain, uh, Binance smart chain. Uh, I think you all know about Binance. It's the uh, biggest uh, uh, exchange, centralized exchange of crypto world. It's also one of the strongest player in the crypto world. And the founder uh, named CZ, you can see his picture uh, in, uh, here. Um, Binance Smart Chain is a hard fork of the Go, uh, GoEther, G-E-T-H um, protocol, and shares many similarities to the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, actually, in my view, it's just a copy of Ethereum, just like Tron and, and many other so-called public chain. Uh, however, the developers of the um, BSC made uh, some major adjustments for, uh, for some key points. The biggest change is, uh, uh, is reflected in the consensus of mechanism of BSC, which ultimately, uh, success, uh, ultimately successfully reduced transaction fee while increasing uh, transaction speed. Uh, in fact, uh, Binance Smart Chain is very similar to Ethereum. Uh, DApps, uh, de decentralized applications, and tokens built on BSC are compatible with uh, EVM. Anyone who has tried on chain interaction may have noticed that your uh, public audit address is exactly the same in the two blockchain, uh, which means when you are switching the chain, your address is still the same number or the same the same address. And there are even uh, question projects, um, projects running on the two network at the same time. And still there are significant difference between the two blockchain. The first is a uh, consensus mechanism. As mentioned earlier, Ethereum 1.0 is based on proof of work consensus, while uh, 2.0 is based on um, proof of stake. And what about what about BSC? Um, BSC use the proof of uh, authority, uh, uh, a reputation-based consensis, uh, POA, a reputation-based consensus algorithm uh, coined by uh, Ethereum co-founder and former CTO Kevin Wood in 2017. The POA, the proof of authority consensus algorithm leverage the value of identity, which means that the uh, block validators are not uh, staking coins by their own reputation instead. Therefore, POS blockchains are secured by the validator nodes and are uh, arbitrarily se selected as a, a choose worst entities. The proof authority model relies on the limitation number of blockchain of block validators, uh, and this is what it makes highly scalable. Uh, system. Blocks and the transactions are verified by um, pre-approved um, participants who act as uh, uh, moderators of the system. According to uh, this particular protocol, only um, 21 uh, authority validators can confirm transactions in BNB chain. Uh, in turn, this makes um, BSC more centralized than other platforms. But what is interesting is that uh, is previously this centralized design 
that greatly improve the speed of BSC transfer confirmation and reduce the gas fee required for each transaction because of its lower operation cost and efficiency trans transfer speed. Uh, BSC has attracted a large number of users and developers. Uh, returning to the uh, feature again, the number of protocols on, on Ethereum on BSC chains has reached uh, 417, which is second, which is second of here, which is the second of the uh, of Ethereum, far uh, far surpassing other public chains and even uh, surpass Israel in the number of daily users. So the, uh, the daily, daily active users on Binance Smart Chain is, uh, uh, is most, is, uh, is the highest, uh, stand out among Israel killers. So uh, all, all the public chains who claim to be the Israel killers, in my view, only BSC can compete with Israel. Uh, other chains, they, uh, they are very weak. And there is a joke shows that, you know, uh, th this graph shows the validators of, uh, of BSC. Uh, and the question is that you can cho choose the validators uh, of Binance Smart Chain. Uh, so the eight graphs are all the selfie of, of CZ, uh, which is a joke to show that all the validators for uh, for BSC, they are all controlled by by CZ. And as mentioned, uh, as we are talking about BNB chain, uh, this is a uh, uh, two go projects are uh, of we must or can't uh, can't lose two go projects. Uh, this is a um, very important um, component of the BSC chain. Uh, due to the cheap gas fee and the low cost of launching projects, there are many low life cycle projects on the uh, BSC. Uh, they are also called Togo project. In, in English, I think you can call it a dirty dog, which means the uh, project is, is not uh, cheap and not very uh, very professional. It's just, uh, it's just like a, a scam or just like a game. Uh, such projects are generally has a following characteristics. Uh, first is that they do not have audit report. Uh, normal contract audits are charged. Uh, even if you use the uh, cheapest uh, uh, security company to audit your encodes, uh, the cheapest I think is uh, Sartik. It also costs around uh, fifteen thousand dollars to and uh, to audit your to audit your smart code. Uh, ranging from tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you choose some uh, famous uh, famous auditor, just like a Snow Mist or Harvard, it may cost around uh, even hundreds of thousands to audit your to order your smart contracts. And by the two go projects, they do not have uh, this money. So the uh, so the many high uh, many high quality projects that will directly open source of code without auditing. Uh, there, there will also be some small projects uh, that, will, that will be audited and the audit report will be placed on the official website. But even so, we need to carefully to take, to check the um, uh, authenticity of the audit report and, and especially check the details. Uh, in the audit report is marked that the administration's uh, authority is too large, which means that uh, this is a uh, not soft to participate in the uh, into the lockup of the project, and the project party is likely to run away with the money, which is also famous named the uh, rug pool. The project party they may just use their authority, their ownership of smart contract to transfer all the money locked in the protocol. Uh, this uh, is a uh, is uh, called rug pool. Also, the second uh, characteristics is uh, they do usually they do, do not have white paper or do not have a professional white paper. The project white paper is a uh, most direct interest to understand a project. If there is no white paper, then the risk factor of this project need to need not to be uh, need not be said much. Even if there will be a 
sharp surge in the short term, it will be difficult to last. Of course, the white paper is not the only criteria. Even if a white paper does not uh, prove that it must be a good project, but at least by studying the white paper, uh, we can better understand the whole picture of the project. And the third uh, characteristic is a uh, high token concentration. Uh, GANs will hold positions and the depth of the token trading is extreme, extremely uh, shallow. Uh, for the Google projects, you can see the most of the tokens are controlled by uh, controlled by the uh, project party and some big wheels. Uh, and also you can see on the DEX, the liquidity in the DEX is very slow. Uh, most of projects are held by gain wheels and the achieves are highly controlled, which means the price can, can be controlled very easy. Of course, while there are huge risks in the category, there are, uh, they are open, accompanied by very uh, substitutional income. The Togo projects on the BSA chain can often bring users several times or even dozens of times uh, the benefits. For example, um, baby, baby dog coin, which was very popular in the recent years. Um, baby, baby dog was launched on June 4, 2021 and issued on BNB Smart Chain. Uh, in addition to the um, in addition to the defo um, deflation, uh, in addition to the uh, deflationary and the de destruction mechanism, the biggest feature is a uh, cooperation with a uh, uh, steer dog charity, Paws with Cause, uh, which will help dogs in the real world and uh, to find to find their homes. And another interesting thing is that baby dog charges uh, ten percent fee per transaction and uh, redistribute half of the fee, uh, five percent, and to all existing baby baby dog holders. And uh, shortly after its founding, uh, a Twitter about a uh, dog coin published by Elon Musk on June one unexpected contributed to the popularity of of baby baby dog coin. The tweet the Twitter the tweet was uh, adapted from the well known sooner raising baby shark and charging charging the um, protagonist shark baby shark to baby dog which happens to have the same name as a baby dog coin as as such the tweet gave baby dog a lot of exposure after this the price of baby dog coin uh, has also risen, creating a thousand fold increase. But the crypto world is like a dark forest full of dangers. As long as you are a little careless when participating in such type of Togo projects, you may lose everything. Therefore, before participating in uh, any project, do your research. You can um, be rich at a time, and you can you can also you may also lose all your money in this project. Uh, after introducing about the BNB chain, let's talk about the uh, and today's uh, third topic and uh, the Aptos Aptos chain. Aptos is born with a, a sliver spoon, which means uh, the valuation of Aptos is uh, uh, highest is highest one before um, before really TGE. And in the private round, the valuation of uh, of Aptos. Raised, uh, raised to uh, over $2 billion. In addition to the above mentioned Ethereum cleaner, such as BSC, Avalanche, and Solana, um, several public chains of the Meta series or the Facebook series have also attracted uh, widespread attention. And the Aptos is uh, one of them. And the, uh, Aptos is a layer one public chain project uh, initiated by the former team member of the meta of the Facebook stablecoin project, uh, the formal name is Libra, and its goal is to build the safest and the most stable layer one blockchain. On March uh, 15, 2022, Aptos complete, com completed a uh, uh, 200 million financing lead by uh, A16Z crypto. A16Z is a uh, Tire one is a top VC in Web3. 
uh, on July 25, after us complete, uh, completed a new round of financing of 115 million lead by FTX Venture and Jump Crypto. FTX is uh, uh, another top uh, exchange, uh, crypto exchanges and uh, Jump Crypto is a uh, you know, famous hedge fund. Uh, and the valuation uh, in the A, A round is around two billion. You must know that Aptos has not yet actually launched at that, at that time. And the private equity uh, round finance valuation has reached half uh, of avalanche. Uh, this is this also shows that investors are uh, definitely optimistic about the uh, future prospects of uh, Aptos. In addition to Aptos, Sui, uh, Sui Ninero and other public and other projects are also a uh, new public chains uh, developed by members of Meta family, uh, the Facebook family, and other uh, financing uh, almost and their financing almost uh, has also reached uh, hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, why are meta public chain generate chain generate generally favored by investors? Uh, this has a uh, mention to their orange their original uh, move language. Uh, this part will will focus on the dev side. It's okay if you don't fully understand. We will talk about the uh, move language now. And the move language and is a virtual machine move virtual machine were designed originally by Facebook to power their Dime blockchain platform. Um, it's providing an uh, intuitively environment and uh, ecosystem for uh, resource-oriented applications. We can notice here the keyword of move is resource-oriented, uh, resource-oriented. From the uh, origin of Bitcoin, most applications on blockchain is uh, uh, about finance. Creating, moving, and uh, destroying resources is a core of financing activities. Uh, this means move is specifically designed and optimized for dealing with blockchain resources and activities. There are two main advantages for using move system. The first advantage is an uh, intuitive way of dealing with resources. In move system, resources belong to the real holding address rather than the creating contract address. This is a big difference from Ethereum. In Ethereum, you, uh, your NFT information is recorded in that NFT contract rather than in your address. The information is something like balance of Alice is one and the token ID is uh, one, two, three. Uh, when you transfer your NFT to another user, let's say Bob, the NFT contract will change the record. And uh, there are uh, shows that the balance of Alice is zero, balance of Bob is one, and token is one, two, three. Uh, this, is, this is like a ledger, just recording users' information. And it does not like you really own the token. The token is not under your address. However, in Move, once the NFT is minted to you, it will lie under your own address. You can transfer it to, you can transfer it or drop it as, uh, as your resource. Uh, the behavior rules are defined by the original contract and code, original contract code, but the real data is separated from, from it and make it a more intuitive way for users. And the second one, the second, uh, key advantage is security. For example, the most common resources on Ethereum now is ERC20 tokens, and each type of uh, token can be um, treated as a resources. Uh, the difference that Move has made here is that uh, resources will have four um, capabilities, copy, drop, store, and the key. If a token is created in so it's created with no capability of drop. You will never delay your token by accident. And this is also a security improvement. In addition, Move is based on Rust and it inherits many security features. Uh, most problems with your resource can be found during the um, communication time of the code. Also, there is 
uh, less dynamic calling in MOVE compared with uh, Solidity. The meta series public chain is also the most uh, most uh, anti anti CP anti CP uh, project on the layer one track in the near future. Uh, let's look forward to the uh, development of after three and uh, other projects to see whether it can be a, a real Ethereum killer. Just as I said, in my view, uh, NABS, the current Ethereum killer, NABSC can compete with Ethereum. Uh, Avalanche, Solana, they are, all, uh, they are all too weak to compete with Ethereum. So let's take a look at whether the, uh, the uh, after three, they use move language, they can uh, compare it or they can go over the Ethereum. Okay, that's all about today's uh, the introduction for the uh, three typical um, public chains. Uh, then you will have uh, another one million to uh, scan the code if you did not finish this uh, as a beginning to uh, take your attendance. Also, if you have any questions, you are you are very welcome to ask in the chat box, or you can. Uh, you can raise your hand and open your microphone to share with me. Yeah, so thanks everyone for listening. If uh, any questions, please ask. If you cannot uh, mean the NFTs, they're probably because uh, you use MetaMask uh, uh, mobile app or you use Rambo, any other kind of wallets. We are trying to fix that out, but the easiest way for you to do is to have a Chrome uh, MetaMask uh, on your laptop or PC. And then it will be really smooth for you to, to mean the DID. You scan the QR code, enter your name. So if you scan the QR code, enter your name and click the tick button, but no response. So you cannot get the six digit hash. I'll get the six digits. Yeah. Yeah, please use this one. Yeah. How about Safari? Uh, I think Safari is not working. You, you need to use Chrome. MetaMask mainly support Chrome. It'll be more easier for you to use. Uh, which uh, Ethereum public chain has built best secrets? I think that's a question for Oliver. Which Ethereum public chain? Uh, Ethereum is, is a public chain. You mean uh, EVM public chain, which uh, accepts uh, Ethereum. Uh, in my view, uh, I think BSC uh, is uh, um, built the best ecosystem. Uh, although it has many uh, to-go projects, which means uh, project are not uh, has not very uh, good quality, but the uh, daily active users are do not tell the lie. And so uh, I think over even in the uh, bear market, over one million uh, users are on BSC every day. And so users use their money to vote for BSC. Uh, in my view, BSC uh, has has done a good job in ecosystem. Um, but the main reason, in my view, maybe that. Binance has too much money. They invest many projects, uh, many group projects to move to uh, Binance chains. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think I have uh, answer question clearly.
or Dino. Uh, I think Sonana is also uh, has also done a great job. You know, Stepan and many other uh, game files they build on Sonana. Sonana is as the most advantage, the biggest advantage for Sonana is uh, is very fast. The TPS is really high, and the gas fee is really low. Um, um, but you know, Sonana did not uh, solve the uh, the uh, triple um, problems, the trillion problems on the of the blockchain. So although it's uh, it goes really fast and have no gas cost, it has uh, it has uh, sacrifice the uh, decentralized and the uh, security. You know, uh, Sonana sometimes they uh, they will stop the stop their virtual machine sometimes because of uh, some uh, some issues the virtual machine meet. Uh, so in my view, Solana has uh, has choice another uh, option another good options for the uh, trainer problem of blockchain, but it's not has not solved the uh, the entire problem. Uh, as for the Cardano, the Card Cardano. Uh, sorry, I'm not very familiar familiar with it, this chain. Maybe you can write down your idea about it. Uh, will AI powered invested of crypto be the next big thing? Uh, in my view, uh, I think uh, is a uh, it will be a good uh, tool to invest for crypto. Uh, but you know, in the traditional market, uh, the quantum strategy uh, is uh, has developed many years. And like uh, Gen Trade, uh, Jump Crypto, and World Quant, uh, they use many strategies, including AI, to invest in the uh, traditional finance market. Uh, so I think AI would be one of the important tools to invest, um, but it will not be the uh, will not be the only one. What do you think about uh, sidechain layers uh, layer two? Uh, actually, in my view, sidechain, you know, sidechain is, is only a public chain which claim to be close to Israel, just like Polygon. You know, Polygon says they are uh, they are sidechain, they are uh, actually side, uh, Polygon has no related to Ethereum. They're just a uh, uh, isolated public chain. But they say they they has close uh, connection with Ethereum. But it's, it's not true in the technology. It's only true they uh, they have moved many projects. Uh, they have built many bridge to Ethereum. But, we, but it not means they really has connection in technology with Ethereum. But they are two. Uh, is actually built on Ethereum and roll up to Ethereum. So I think uh, layer two is better than sidechain. Should I learn programming language other than Solidity? Uh, I think so. If you have learned Solidity very well and you think you, you want to uh, learn more and you want to build on, on some new chains like Atos, you need to learn Move or other languages. You know, uh, just one to two months ago, uh, moves they do uh, marketing as uh, the, the Aptos, they do, I, I think it's Aptos, they do the marketing. And they say that uh, the move programmer can earn uh, $1,200 per, per hour. The move, move language is a uh, uh, is, uh, uh, best language to earn money. But I, I'm not sure it's true because I, I do not hire uh, move language pro pro programmer now. Do you think three is better than Aptos? Uh, because you know three is not uh, ha has not launched now, so I, I do not have many information on, on three. Just look at the uh, white paper. I think they are very similar, but. Uh, I, I need to wait for more information and to try on it whether it's, it's better. Yeah, 
Yeah, thanks for the question. A good question. Great, so I think we do not have other questions. Um, I guess it's time for us to end the session. Again, thank you. Thanks uh, everyone of you for attending. Uh, as for the recording, uh yeah it, it, uh you can see the recording we'll post it on 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 the website and also on all of our communities as for after uh you can join camp after the id is six element yeah that is true uh and it's pending if it is pending then you're going you are you are you, it will going to happen soon you just refresh several times like uh, in 30 seconds no, normally you can see your did you see your token ID. If you see your token ID, that, that means you, are, you have made it successful. Uh, yeah. And uh, after you have the DID, just a quick join camp and then you can claim the NFTs. Course worksheet will be available very, very soon, like uh, uh, tomorrow or the, the day after tomorrow. We have quizzes for you to test. Uh, how you guys are doing. Yeah, if no other question, I guess that's the end of this session. Thank you all for coming. And next week we'll have an NFT sessions. That will be really, really interesting. Uh, hopefully we'll also ask uh, some guest speakers to come uh, to join a more interesting roundtable discussion, that kind of thing. So yeah, I think that's all for today. Uh, if you want a six digit hash uh, for opening ceremony in NFT, I guess you need to, <laughs> Have a look at uh, if you, you I, we only grant the opening ceremony participators about the NFT. So if you haven't, it's really a pity for you. Okay, uh, and uh, yeah, that's all for today's session. Thank you all for joining again. Next week will be NFT and uh, you know a topic related. Do remember to mint your DID, join the mentorship program, and uh, and and join the career hub in the Discord. Thank you. Uh, see you next week. Bye, guys.